Well, howdy there, folks, and welcome into this video here today. One of the best analysts on all of Wall Street has come out and said that Tesla stock is going to go to $1,000 in a very short amount of time. So we're going to look at exactly what this gentleman said. I'm going to kind of dissect this, okay? We'll kind of talk about this a bit in depth, and I'm going to give kind of my opinion on kind of how I think about a scenario like this where a stock I own, like Tesla, for instance, an analyst comes out and says it's going to $1,000 in a very short amount of time. So we'll get into all that. Hope you guys enjoy this video. As always, all I ask in return is that you smash that thumbs up button. As the banner says back there, wait, wrong side, over here, okay? <laughs> right there all right and uh yeah i hope you guys enjoy this video as always here by the way we have a facebook group just so you guys know we actually just started this facebook group here so if you're on the fb and want to join us check out the pinned comment down there i think you guys will thoroughly enjoy that facebook group a lot of a lot of great knowledge in there and uh yeah which you know facebook has been a platform we haven't even pretty much been on ever so yeah i hope to build a really good group over there on the fb by the way i just uh found this out a few days ago uh we got some dividend money from from the walgreens right nine thousand three hundred fifty dollars in the main account here you know i love growth stocks but man it is nice every once in a while when you collect that dividend money and then it's like hmm i just got 10k let me go buy some stocks with that 10k man that's the one really nice thing about dividend stocks okay let's get in this guys why does this person one of the best analysts on wall street think this stock's going to a thousand dollars very quickly well Webb Bush views china recall as bump in the road for tesla maintains outperform rating one thousand dollar price target Outperform rating, if you're wondering what that is, it's essentially, you know, this individual believes that Tesla stock is going to outperform the stock market in general with a $1,000 price target. And whenever they have a price target, it's usually within a 12-month span, okay? So, that yeah, like whenever you hear these analysts give a price target, it's within 12 months, which gets into the fast part, okay? Despite a negative PR issue for Tesla, Web Bush analyst Dan Ives maintains his bullish outperform rating on the stock along with a $1,000 price target calling uh, the recall of 285,000 cars in China, a little more than a bump in a road for the car maker. On Sunday, Tesla disclosed that it would need to implement a software fix for more than 285,000 Model 3 and Model Y cars in China to address issues with the vehicle's autopilot feature, okay? First off here, right? Whenever I think about a software-related thing in regards to a Tesla, I think about over-the-air update. Like, you know, usually when you historically would think about a big recall, right if for an automaker like usually that means they're gonna have to go in and switch out parts and do a bunch of like physical labor right and it's gonna be extremely costly I'm not sure a hundred percent if they're gonna be able to do a software over-the-air update but it sounds like that at least is a potential it, it's not like oh they got to switch out some faulty part right or switch out the airbag in the car or something like that right where it's like oh we got to have all these cars coming in we got to do manual physical labor here and things like that so that's very very important to keep in mind right while this represents nearly all the cars sold in china over recent years i doesn't think it will derail the near term or long-term bull thesis for tesla in china this is, this is his quote. This is not the news bulls want to see as it adds more negative PR, public relations issues in China. But now it's about Musk and Co. making sure these issues are in the rearview mirror and moving forward to make sure the situation is not defining negative chapter for Tesla in regards to the, the whole China story, right? I've said in a note to Web Bush clients on Monday. Shares of the stock were obviously trading higher on this, okay? And if we look, yes, it's outperforming the market here today. It definitely is. I don't know if this is just because of what Dan Ives came out and said here today or what's going on, but it's obviously outperforming what the market's up today. It's up about 2.5%. We're up about $12,000 here today on Tesla, okay? So obviously a good day. Congrats to any Tesla shareholders. It's a pretty good day for you out there, okay? Now, I want to talk about some very, 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 very important things here, okay? We want to get into how, how good is this analyst. We're going to get into some things that are kind of working against Tesla in the short term and um, kind of a perspective I'm going to give you guys here, okay? So let's get into this. How good is this analyst or bad is this analyst? Well, if we go to tips ranks, Dan Ives ranks number 43 out of 7,572 analysts on tip ranks, okay? So this is very, very important because whenever I hear an analyst come out with a price target, 
The first thing I think about is like, hmm, do I really care that much? The second thing I think about is like, where does this analyst rank, right? Because sometimes you hear these analysts come out with some ridiculous numbers, oh, blah, blah, blah. And like, they're like, you know, rank like 7,000th out of like 7,500 something, right? But this analyst, Dan Ives, he ranks very, very high, okay? Now, keep in mind, this is off of a one year, right? So it doesn't mean like, you know, him over the past 20 years has been amazing, but over the past one year, he has been doing amazing at his job, which is, you know, kind of giving information about stocks and where he thinks these stock prices are going to go and things like that, right? And so he's tearing it up, right? Number, to be number 43 out of 7,572, you're, 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 you're in the, uh, you know, the, the best percentages. Let's just put it that way, okay? That's very darn impressive. So it's not like we're just listening to some joker who, you know, is, is a horrible analyst. This guy's top tier, at least in the past year, he's been in the top tier, okay? Now, Tesla has two main things working against them. and kind of give you a perspective on this, okay? What are the two main things working against Tesla in the short term? Well, the first thing is this right here, okay? It's a huge market capitalization now. If you're thinking about getting the stock to go up a bunch more to, let's say, $1,000 or above $1,000, this is the main thing you have working against the stock nowadays is this massive market capitalization, okay? I mean, you know, back when this was a $50 billion market cap, $70 billion, $100 billion, you know, you can move the stock. Even, even you know, if a lot of retail investors wanted to move the stock, they could they could move the stock, right? I mean, you're talking about this is such a big company. You have such a gauntlet of buyers and sellers now, right, that... It, it's beginning to get a little hard to push this stock around. And I think this is part of the reason why Tesla has taken a breather for the past several, several months now is because this market cap is, is getting to become such a gigantic number, right? That it's getting harder and harder to push around. Also, the stock price is $688, right? That keeps some retail investors out. But ultimately, when you're dealing with these type of numbers now, you're talking about the only way you're moving the stock is Wall Street. Big money, hedge funds, institutional money. That is the only thing that's going to move a stock like Tesla now at this point in time, okay? Johnny on Robinhood buying two shares of Tesla is not moving this stock anymore, okay? It's the big institutional money because this is such a large company. And that goes for all massive, massive companies, okay? So you have that working against the stock in terms of getting that stock price to go up to $1,000 or so in the short term, okay? Another thing you have working against the stock in the short term is this, okay? There's obviously a semiconductor shortage out there. And this is, a, this is negatively affecting pretty much all automakers, and it will negatively affect Tesla to at least a certain extent. And so Tesla, in the short term, could show numbers that aren't as impressive around deliveries, right, because of things that are out of their control, like a semiconductor shortage. And then all of a sudden, Wall Street, the media, whatever, can all of a sudden, like, you know, say, oh, Tesla has no demand. You can also start to hear things like that out there in the media, right? If all of a sudden Tesla over the next couple of quarters doesn't put up as insane of numbers, which Tesla, because of how much his stock price has risen over the past year or two, Tesla's in a position where they're expected to blow away numbers every quarter now, right? They're expected to just do crazy volumes of that car you see behind me, that Model 3, right? Uh, obviously, the Model S Plaid. Uh, you know, I'm not supposed to get that car until, I think, August. So, you know... I don't know if that's because there's just a lot of people in front of me that are supposed to get it before me or whether that's because of semiconductor shortage. We don't know, right? But obviously you have kind of this, this negative overhang of the semiconductor shortage that could potentially hamper numbers over the next couple quarters, okay? This is something very, very important to keep in mind if you're thinking about what does a stock price do in the short term, okay? Keyword is short term there, all right? Very, very important, all right? Now, I've said to you guys, uh, you know, a few times over the past few months that I thought the stock could chill in the, you know, $400, $500 range all the way up to a little above $800, okay? So far, it's been doing that. I kind of expect the stock to continue to do that for the next year, for the, basically the next 12 to, you know, 18 months or so. Now, it's possible maybe it doesn't do that, and the next thing you know, it's at $1,000, $1,200, but when I look at some of the, the, the short-term headwinds around the semiconductor shortage that will hurt, hurt numbers, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, Tesla has no demand. It's like, well, maybe they just can't make the cars because they don't have the semiconductors. Like, you know, you know, guys know how it is in the media sometimes, right? In mainstream media, right? So you have that overhang. Plus, you have the fact that the valuations climbed a lot and the stock has all of a sudden, you know, kind of priced itself for perfection in the short term. You have all those negative things working against the stock short term, which is why I think the stock will be range bound for the next 
next 12 to 18 months. It's possible it maybe it moves up and it's really hard to predict stocks in the short term. Maybe it moves up to $1,000, $1,200 in the, you know, in the next six months. It's just hard to see that because of how big the company's gotten, to be quite frank, and some of the short term kind of headwinds around the stock, especially in things that aren't even in their control, right? But in terms of me in regards to the stock, right? I try not to ever get too caught up into the short term. Oh, the stock price is going there. Stock price is going there, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's fun to talk about. It's fun to discuss and hypothesize. Oh, maybe the stock's going to go here and there. But at the end of the day, me as a long-term investor in the stock, I try not to get too caught up into it because otherwise it sets you up into kind of a, a shorter-term mentality around this company. And I think that's the worst mentality. You don't want to try to time in and out of Tesla. That's something I've had to learn the hard way over time. You don't try to time in and out. So even though I think the stock could be range-bound for you know a certain amount of time, doesn't mean I'm going to go ahead and cash out of my shares and try to you know put that money in somewhere else and be like, like, I'm going to try to get back in Tesla because, you know, there's certain stocks at the end of the day, I just feel like in the stock market that you buy them and hold them and it's best to not try to time out of them. Okay. Tesla's a good example of that. Uh, Amazon's a good example of that. And, um, you know, Apple's a good example of that. I mean, there's just certain, certain companies out there that just seem to continue to innovate, continue to keep their, their companies at the, at the forefront. And a lot of times it's not even worth it. I, and coming from experience, I've sold some of these stocks at, you know, prices and I thought, oh, well, maybe it got too high right now and I'll time it out and I'll get into something else. And most of the time, guys, it's just not worth trying to play that timing game and that short term thing. At the end of the day, I'm a huge believer in Tesla because I believe this company could start moving 5 million, 10 million cars a year, you know, five years, 10 years out, right? And I believe they could be the number one player in autonomous driving, autonomous taxi networks and things like that, right? Those are long-term bullish theses I have that take time to play out. And so to get caught up in the short-term mumbo jumbo, does it go to a thousand over the next 12 months or not? It's fun to talk about, but at the end of the day, it's not going to change my bullish thesis or not. And it's just going to probably set me up for... Um, you know, a letdown if the stock didn't do that, right? Imagine I'm so caught up in the stock trying to get to a thousand and then it doesn't get to a thousand. All of a sudden I'm like, oh, you know, all of a sudden I feel bad. It's like, what's the point when, you, when you're holding a stock for the long term, right? So that's my perspective on that, guys. Anyways, I'd love to hear your opinion on this stock, especially over the, obviously this, this stock is, you know, we're talking about it over the next 12 months. Where do you guys think this one's going over the next 12 months? We'd love to hear from you guys. You think it's going over a thousand over the next 12 months? You think it's going to be kind of range bound 400, 500 to maybe $800 on the high end? I would love to hear from you guys as always. Much love. I appreciate you guys for being here as always. If you're looking to join us in that Facebook group, brand new, check it out. It's the main pin comment down there. Much love guys and have a great day.